Now, Professor Kukwasari, um, there are many who are wondering, what's, what's going on in this country? There are teachers who are employed, and it takes two years, three years, some do more than that, and they have not yet received their first paycheck. And yet we are paying ghosts. Yeah. Actually go Tell us angry. what you think about this, and then briefly uh, deal with the problem you have with the Article 7071 issues. Sorry. Um, Samson, yeah. I think I agree with my friends Dominic and Joseph. Uh, look, this ghost problem uh, are as old as the Republic itself. Every year, the Auditor General does the work and he reports that they are ghosts. We talk about it for a few days and then we move on our merry ways. Nothing ever happens. So to me, it's no longer interesting that they are ghost workers. What is interesting for me is who is creating these ghosts hmm. and why don't we go after them? Right. When you look at the report, when you look at the report, I will highlight three ministries. Ministry of Education alone has over 5,000 goals, and it is alleged that payments to these goals exceed 200 million. Then Ministry of Health, 1,300 goals, payments exceed 127 million. Mm. And then local government ministry, 548 goals, payments exceeding 34 million. Ministry of Information so has I, only one ghost. That I can be a genuine error. <laughs> and conduct a forensic audit of the ministries. I'll go beyond a payroll audit and do a forensic audit mm. with an intent to figure out what specific schemes are enabling these ghost payments, who are the ringleaders of these schemes, so that we can administer a blow to them that will strike fear in anyone who intends to bring up a gold scheme to other departments. Mm. Now, when you look at the report, it looks like the voters register. Uh, retired workers not terminated, you know, you know, in the voters register, we have dead people not removed. Duplicate social security numbers. Okay, like duplication, paying people who have not been biometrically verified, even though that is not supposed to happen. Hmm. Personation, that is using other people's qualification or using other people's voters uh, card to vote. One bank account that allows about 30 or 40 people to deposit their paycheck. That is a no-no in hmm. any payroll system. All right. Several suspected fraudulent certificates used for employment, over leveraged workers. There's a policy that no worker be allowed to deduct half of his salary for installment payments. But that's not followed. They have invested in an Oracle platform. It's a beautiful platform. And you can configure it in ways that enable some validation controls. But they don't do that. Why don't they do that? They don't do that because they want these things to persist. And so it's a systemic problem that is linked to the earlier problem that we described. Because you see, people see the tone at the top. And when they are unhappy with the tone at the top, well, they are not at the top. So they cannot have as gratia. They cannot be paid 20 years back pay. So they also design their own schemes. And unless we figure out how to stop the problem at the top, these other things at the bottom will continue. Mm. Now, on the Article 71... No, just, just a I second, think... just a second, just a second. Even the chieftaincy ministry, that small ministry, we cannot ensure that there's no ghost name there. There are 23 ghost names there. As an accounting professor, what do you think should be done beyond the other softwares you are recommending to avoid these things happening? 
Uh, that's what I was talking about, the validation controls. When you buy the Oracle platform, it is set at a default value. So the controllers and accountant general's department should go in and configure it and say, for instance, don't pay unless you are biometrically verified. The only reason somebody can pay if it's not bi biometrically verified mm. is because you have not turned on the validation control. Okay. These validation controls are there for a reason, mm. but people subvert the control system by deliberately not turning them on. That's why all these things are happening. Okay. If you have a good accountant who turns these things on, then all the control problems will disappear. Okay. Then what you have left is the fraudulent problem. Okay. The Prof, fraudulent so problem let's, it's is okay where now. I let's call spend, for a forensic audit. Let's spend the next uh, four or five minutes to hear your concerns about the Article 7071, you know, matters. Something. If you look at Article 71, it is an anti-corruption article. It's an anti-corruption article. Okay. Why do I say that? Read it carefully. Mm. It says the president sets up a committee. The committee makes a recommendation. The president approves the package for the parliamentarians, and the parliamentarians approve the package for the executive. Right. You see that? Yes. Why? Why is the president approving the package for parliamentarians and the parliamentarians approving for the executive? Because we are afraid that if the president approves his own package and parliamentarians approve their own package, then they are going to just give themselves some hefty bonuses that the country cannot sustain. Mm. In now, the on the, other, on, the other, on the other hand, on the other hand, if the president treats the parliamentarians well, they will also treat him well. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I was going to go to that. Okay. That if you just stop at what I read, then you are not really interpreting the constitution carefully. You are missing the anti-corruption element in that article. That article also implies that the president and parliament should not be allowed to collude to take care of themselves. That's what it means. And then thirdly, the people themselves have to exercise some oversight of what is going on. When you put all that together, it basically means no president or parliament should be allowed to determine their own package. So if I'm the president today and I set up a committee and the committee comes up with some recommendations that I accept, that should take effect prospectively. I should not benefit from that. And the parliamentarians that I work with should not benefit from that. So this whole thing should always apply prospectively. And we are doing it so backward that we are now allowing it to happen retroactively. Second, an intervening election must take place before the, the recommendations take effect. So if I am the president in 2016 and I approve something, that should take effect not in 2016, maybe not even in 2020, but in 2024. Otherwise, you are going to defeat the whole purpose of Article 71, which, as I, I said, is an anti-corruption article, making sure that people are not taking care of themselves. So the idea that whenever the president is living, he can recommend certain things that take retrospective effect, that is so wrong. There is just no organization in the world where people's compensation package are determined after they have finished working. No. When you come in, your compensation package is known, and that's what it is. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So when we bring in a class of MPs, their package should be whatever was there when they got elected. Yeah. And then if they decide, and I think that these recommendations and these committees should not be set up every four years. Maybe they should be set up every 10 years and then their recommendations bind for the next 10 years, 
Then after that, after that 10 years, we set up another committee, and that committee makes its own recommendations. All right. The way we are interpreting it is just funny. Every right. president comes in, he sets up his own committee. Mm. The committee takes care of the president and the parliamentarians. It defeats completely the whole purpose of Article 71. Thank you very much. We are much. literally uh, mm. interpreting Article 71 mm. in a way that no employer would do. And the reason this happens, something is because we, the people, are not too vigilant. Mm. You know, in the US here, let me tell you something. The Congress can increase its own salary, but they tried it before, and the next elections it was bloodshed. Just about every parliament, uh, every congressman lost his seat. Mm -hmm. The people were so upset. Mm. So now, what happens? Even though they can increase their pay, they never touch it. <laughs> Congress's package has not been adjusted for about 15 years. Why? Because they are afraid of the people. Our Politicians are not afraid of us. They know that we will just talk. I mean, Prof, oh, Prof will come on news files, he will make some good points, but nobody will, you know, take it seriously. Interesting.